Time now for the morning rush. The city is now helping neighbors deal with the problem family. The Franco family lives in the Wells Park neighborhood where in the past few months there have been two SWAT situations and a shooting. Now, the city is adding the Franco's home to the ADAPT program, meaning the city will be watching it closely and could eventually determine if the home is a nuisance. Erica. Yeah, here's a look at the weather pattern. We're expecting cool conditions for today. Still a little bit breezy on the southwest side of the state, but things are expected to cool down as we head through the day as that front pushes through. By tomorrow, we're going to have some warmer air filtering in from the west. That'll create more, much more mild conditions. Temperatures warming back into the 60s. Crystal. ACLU moving forward with their lawsuit against the Rio Reba County Sheriff's Office. ACLU is accusing the Department of retaliating against journalist Tabitha Clay. She reported on former Deputy Jeremy Barnes, who tased a special needs student in May. He is charged in that case. On to new news for you this morning. A local filmmaker's latest piece is highlighting youth violence within the city. The documentary, titled Growing Up in the Real Breaking Bad Albuquerque, covers heavy, to heavy topics like teens using drugs and murdering people. The filmmaker hopes the documentary will inspire change within the community. APS schools, once considered in need of major intervention, are now losing funding. They were once classified as MRI schools. Governor Michelle Lujan Grisham reclassified them after her new PED team did away with the A through F grading system. The reclassification allows the schools to make changes. The journal reports, though, it's cutting their funding. Also new for you this morning, Santa Fe Public Schools Superintendent Veronica Garcia says she plans to run for a state Senate seat. The journal reports that the seat would represent District 21 in Albuquerque. That's where Garcia lives. Garcia says if elected, she will still keep her job as a superintendent. Happening right now, the city of Albuquerque is appealing a federal judge's ruling deeming their panhandling ordinance unconstitutional. The ordinance would prohibit anyone from standing along interstate ramps, in travel lanes, or even on certain medians. However, the city says it will not enforce the ordinance until the case is complete. Students at one New Mexico university won't be going to class this morning following a cyber attack. The IT department at New Mexico Highlands University became aware of the malware attack Wednesday morning. They say the system that keeps student and employee records was not breached. They're now running virus scans on campus computers. A popular Napier staples in the process of reopening its doors. Scalo Northern Italian Grill abruptly closed last December due to monetary reasons, according to the previous owners. Now the restaurant is under new ownership. The current owners say they won't make major changes. No word on when it will reopen, though. Another New Mexico lawmaker is supporting the impeachment inquiry against President Trump. Representative Xochitl Torres Small wrote in an opinion piece in the Las Cruces and News that she supports the inquiry after the White House stopped cooperating. Torres Small was part of a small group of Democrats that were either undecided or opposed. Erica. Here's a look at the Metro Threat Index for today. I'm keeping it at a three because it is going to be a calm day. However, this morning is very, very cold. Do not leave the house without your winter gear. I'm talking layers, coats, gloves, and hats. Crystal. New Mexico farmers and ranchers, you're getting some tax relief from the IRS that applies to those who had to sell their livestock due to drought or severe weather. The agency says the extension affects sales that happened in 2015. Anyone whose drought replacement was scheduled to expire this year now has until the end of their next tax year. The highly anticipated Breaking Bad movie El Camino is available to watch right now. Today, the Chemo Theater is hosting a viewing of the movie. Tickets are sold out for the 7 p.m. showing, but don't worry, there's still tickets up for grabs for the 10 p.m. The movie will be playing at the Chemo through the 14th. It's also available on Netflix. In honor of the premiere, some canine locals have already been getting ready. Ruth Ann Peterson sent us these photos of her Nellie Bell around town at various filming locations for Breaking Bad. The that does include Saul Goodman's law office and with their suitcase packed ready to go on the lam at John B. Robert Dam. This morning, Lobos have a new, more user-friendly system for people to buy and scan basketball tickets from their phone. If you choose not to go, you can still transfer that ticket to your friend. This is all in an effort to bring more people to the games. Coming off the Lobos' two worst years for attendance in the pit's history. UNM is offering a yoga class to help uh, hopefully ease the stress of calculus. 45 students will add 50 minutes of yoga before class. Instructors say the goal of the co-curriculum is to transfer the skills they learn in yoga to calculus. The course drew so much attention. UNM students say, or UNM rather, says 75 students signed up for that course in the spring. 
Next month, the Albuquerque Museum will get a traveling exhibit showcasing the work of Jim Henson. Henson famously created Kermit the Frog and the Muppets, but you can also expect to see memorabilia from his movies like The Labyrinth and The Dark Crystal. The exhibit will make a four-month stop here in New Mexico from November 23rd through April 19th. All right, let's go check on the early morning drive. Take a look at our traffic map here. Good news is uh, we're mostly green. You can see traffic really slow around Balloon Fiesta Park. That's to be expected. APS schools are off today. So keep that in mind if you're heading out to go see the balloons this morning. KRQ News Tracker also out and about. We're heading eastbound on I-40. This is around the Coors area. This is one of our traffic trouble spots as well in the morning. So keep an eye on that. As you can see, things are moving, though, through this area. So we're looking pretty good. David. Number seven at Balloon Fiesta and the second day for special shapes. Yesterday's events were hampered by winds, but that does not appear to be the case this morning with a successful launch of Dawn Patrol. Now the mass ascension is scheduled for 7 a.m. Stay with us. The five facts are coming up in 90 seconds. See something in this newscast that you want to know more about? Check out Always On, KRQE.com. Time for the five facts and number five are waiting to see if some changes to Lobo basketball will bring in more fans. The Lobos are introducing a new, more user-friendly system for people to buy and scan their tickets straight from their phone. They say if you choose not to go to the game, you can still transfer that ticket to your friend. This follows the Lobos' two worst years for attendance in the Pitts history. Number four, now it's been a rough few years for drivers on Central, but now Albuquerque City officials saying new traffic technology on Central will make for a much faster commute for drivers in that area. The new smart traffic signals are the first to beam real-time traffic data back to the city. With the technology, the city can adjust the timing to all traffic signals on the ART route based on the current traffic. Erica. Yeah, here's a look at the balloon fiesta forecast for the weekend. Obviously, this morning is good. Balloons are going up. Tonight should have no problems either. Saturday morning and Saturday night are good to go as well. Winds are expected to stay light. Only thing is that Saturday morning is going to be pretty chilly yet again. Number two, attorneys with the ACLU are moving forward with the lawsuit against a New Mexico Sheriff's Department. In that lawsuit, the ACLU accuses Rio Riva County Sheriff James Zuhan and his department of retaliating against Rio Grande Sun journalist Tabitha Clay. She reported on former Deputy Jeremy Barnes, who deployed a stun gun on a special needs student in May. Barnes is charged in that case. No comment from the county's attorney yet. Number one, a local filmmaker's latest piece is about youth violence. It's getting people in the community thinking about solutions to the problem. The film, titled Growing Up in the Real Breaking Bad Albuquerque, the documentary covers heavy topics like teens using drugs and even murdering people. The creator and his team hope the shocking reality of the film gets people talking. The group plans to host community screenings of the piece and bring it to area high schools. The filmmaker, John Acosta, was also behind the YouTube series Duke City Diaries. If you want to see it for yourself, we do have a link for you on our website, always on krqe.com.